Well, in this video, we're going to talk about exchange rates and specifically what impact they pose uh, on businesses. And now, an exchange rate is simply the value of one nation's currency in comparison to another. So for example, if you were to take the US dollar, so one US dollar, uh, that is worth approximately uh, 0.72 euros, all of those fluctuate on a, on a daily basis, of course. And so if you were to essentially take a, a sum of money here in the US and you were to go over to Europe and you were to exchange that for euros, you wouldn't get you know, the equivalent in euros, you would get less because that's the essential, that's the essential exchange rate. Now exchange rates, there's two different types. Uh, first we have what we call a fixed exchange rate. And what a fixed exchange rate means is that the ultimately the, the rate or the value remains constant. And so what that means is say for example that one US dollar equals 0.72 euros. Uh, a fixed exchange rate means that it would never change. It would always be that same constant rate. The value of euros to dollars would never change. And the way that governments do that is they actually will purchase their own currency. And so what this does is by purchasing your own currency, you essentially are creating artificial demand. Meaning that if your currency changes in value in relation to another currency, uh, the way that you essentially kind of increase its value is by purchasing more of it. And so a central bank of a particular government will go ahead and purchase its own currency, uh, thus artificially creating demand, which in turn will strengthen that currency and bring it more in line with what it wants to keep the value at specifically. Um, so you can imagine that this is really difficult to do. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of resources to accomplish this. For the most part, fixed exchange rates aren't used very frequently. Uh, we use uh, more commonly what we call a floating exchange rate. And what a floating exchange rate means is that the value of currencies is dependent on supply and demand. Meaning that if the demand for a particular currency is increasing, right, there's more demand, then the likelihood of that nation's currency strengthening is much, is much more likely, is much more probable. Uh, likewise, if demand for a nation's currency is decreasing, meaning that people are you know, not purchasing things or acquiring that currency, if anything, they're kind of removing themselves from having that currency in their possession, then that's what happens is you weaken the, the currency. So the value will lessen in relation to some of the other currencies as well. Uh, so for the most part, we use a floating exchange rate. Here in the US, we use a floating exchange rate. We have not used a fixed exchange rate since the 1970s uh, because it is very difficult to manage and there are some implications with that. Not to say that a floating exchange rate is without, its, is without flaw. Uh, so really, what is the implication of this for, for business? Okay, there's a couple of different things we have to consider that pose a particular impact depending upon the exchange rate. And so what we'll do is we'll group them together and say we have a strong currency. And so let me give you an example of a, a strong currency. Let's say that one US dollar originally equaled one euro, just for sake of comparison. Now obviously it doesn't, but this is just an example. And let's go ahead and say that that value changes. So instead of one US dollar equaling one euro, our new particular type of currency, or the new value I should say, is that one US dollar equals now two euros. 
And so if you're going to go ahead and go over to Europe and spend some money, then if you take one US dollar, you would essentially exchange that for two euros. And so your money now goes further than it originally did. So if you take 500 US dollars, essentially you would get 1,000 euros. Okay? And so we would say that the US dollar has a stronger currency in comparison to the euro. And that's, it's all relative, of course, because you have to compare one currency to, to another, of course. And so what's the impact on this? right? What's the significance? of having a, a stronger currency. Okay? Well, the first thing is, is for the US, you would look at this and you would think that there would be what we call weaker tourism for the US. Uh, imagine you were in, the, you know, in one of the Eurozone countries and you were traveling to the US. Well, originally you had a kind of dollar for dollar, if you will, uh, transition. So if you were to go to the US and, and you know, go to you know, a particular amusement park or a city or whatever the case is, right? You would, you would be a tourist. Uh, you would get a fr pretty favorable exchange rate. But now that the U.S. dollar's currency has strengthened, meaning the euro has weakened in comparison to the dollar, well, now if you're trading 500 euros, then you're only getting $250. And so what that does is that poses a threat to uh, U.S. tourism because now, because of the currency exchange rate, it's now not as favorable to tour in the U.S., Okay? Now, things cost the same. Now, prices have not changed, but what has changed is the value of one currency in relationship to another. The next thing that you have here is the impact on imports, or on exports, I should say. We'll do exports first. Uh, a U.S. business, an export business is something that in the U.S. we produce them here and then we ship them to other areas of the world. And so now, by our currency strengthening, for U.S. exports, uh, if we are going to go ahead and we're going to ship goods overseas, it now is more expensive for those countries to acquire our goods. And so this is going to hurt our export business significantly. But with regards to imports, this is going to increase import business. Because now, once again, I have a more favorable exchange rate. So my money, remember, goes further. And so I'm still spending, let's say, you know, $1,000, but now I can get twice as much by purchasing things from European type countries or company, countries that use the euro and bringing them back into the U.S. And so this is good for a strong currency is very favorable for, for imports, for purchasing things and bringing them in. Uh, but for exports, it certainly makes your particular goods seem less attractive because ultimately they are more expensive, even though the price tag is the exact same thing. Okay. So what happens over time is if your, if your currency is continually stronger than most currencies, what this will do is this will encourage domestic businesses to set up places or set up shop in, in foreign countries. And this is a way that they can bypass those exchange rates, right? Instead of making it uh, unattractive for foreign countries to do business with you because you have to take into consideration the exchange rates, you can bypass them altogether, setting up some operations in that foreign country, and then that's not such a big issue. Now, you do have to, obviously, if you're going to bring that back to the U.S., you have to convert that, and that's another issue for another time. Uh, but that can be a way of encouraging domestic firms to establish businesses overseas. Now, another example, let's say that we have a weak currency. So, for our example, let's say we started with one US dollar equaling one euro. And now we're going to transition, and one US dollar is going to equal 0.5 euros. Okay. So instead of going to Europe and you know 500 US dollars equaling 500 euros, now 500 US dollars equals 250 euros. Okay, uh, and so what are the implications for a a weak currency, right? Well, for the US here, uh, it's going to be stronger for tourism, right? Because now. In our last example, right, it was more favorable to tour over in Europe because it's cheaper. Uh, now the opposite is true because now the U.S. has a weaker currency. And so now it's more favorable for people over in Europe or have access to the euro 
to go ahead and tour here in the U.S. and to you know look go to different states and amusement parks and different things of that nature because their money can now go further. So it's it's obviously much better. Uh, the same thing holds true for imports and exports, right? And so for a weaker currency, our export business is going to be more favorable. Because look at it from this standpoint, right? If you're a European country, okay, originally you were getting a, an equivalent match essentially. One euro equaled one US dollar. Well, now one euro is two US dollars. And so I can acquire more goods from a weaker currency, right? From a country that possesses a weaker currency. Now, the downside, of course, is that our imports are not going to look as favorable because now that's more expensive for other countries. And so now maybe they cannot purchase as much as they originally did before. Okay, And this is increasingly common. A lot of countries, interestingly enough, uh, will purchase and will acquire the currency of another country to try and strengthen that foreign nation's currency so that it does not hurt their particular import business. This is really common. Uh, Switzerland did this for, for quite some time as a way of making their currency seem a little bit weaker or strengthen other currencies so it wouldn't hurt their import business as significantly as it did before. And the other por portion, of course, is uh, encouraging domestic firms to open businesses in foreign countries, right? If you're in a, in a weak currency, this is going to impact you kind of the opposite way than it did for a particular strong currency. So in this example, because in relation to the currency of the U.S., the euro is strengthening, uh, this may prove the, the opposite effect here. So what may happen is you might have European countries, so let's say countries from the euro, now moving some type of operations over to the US. And the reason for that is, is that those businesses that are involved in trying to uh, export their particular products are going to run into some issues with regards to, well, it's now more expensive. And so that produces less of an incentive for foreign countries to purchase goods in that particular currency there. And so uh, you can see ultimately how the implication is pretty huge. You know, when we look at exchange rates, which you can track these on a daily basis by looking just online or through kind of the, the market watch section in the Wall Street Journal to get a good indication over what the move or moving is or uh, movements are in terms of rates. And you can see ultimately how this can impact businesses in a, in a variety of different, different type sectors and in a variety of different uh, types of businesses for that matter.